Hello everyone, it's Melinda. I'm very excited to look at some specimens of Tiger's Eye and Peter Sight. Um, and I decided to make a video of them together because as I discovered through my research, they are more likely than not the same mineral that has gone through a very similar process in its creation. So um, it makes sense, I think, to kind of discuss the two, um, especially because one is extremely expensive in comparison to the other, um, and again, that all just fascinates me. Um, so I'll start with Tiger's Eye. I think that's what we're more familiar with. It's certainly something you can get at most metaphysical stores and gem shows, um, and doesn't tend to be uh, an overly expensive purchase. <laughs> Let's start with my necklace. So Tiger's Eye is a Chatoyant gemstone uh, that is a form of chalcedony quartz. Believe it or not, this beautiful stone is a form of quartz. Uh, but it didn't start out as quartz. It began as the fibrous blue mineral called crocodilite, uh, which is made up of iron and sodium. Crocodilite, you'll probably know it better as asbestos. Uh, so the asbestos, the crocodilite, was gradually uh, transformed into quartz while maintaining that fibrous formation. So tiger's eye is what is known in mineralogy as a pseudomorph. The term comes from the Greek for false form. So pseudomorphs form when one mineral replaces another. The transformation begins when quartz becomes embedded between the fibers of crocodilite. Uh, this process can result in two different gemstones, a blue stone called hawk's eye or the golden brown stone called tiger's eye. All of my specimens have been polished and shaped. None of them are in the raw form, but I think this slab really does uh, show off that structure, that fibrous structure inside of the uh, tiger's eye. So in the course of that process, the crocodilite is completely dissolved, but the quartz takes on that fibrous formations and this creates the parallel lines within the gem, which gives it that shifting play of light that we're seeing here in the stone. Um, though the iron and sodium of the crocodilite dissolves, traces of the iron oxide remain and this creates that golden color uh, that's typical of tiger's eye. If there is less iron present, then the quartz will tend uh, towards the blue color of the original crocodilite and is then often re referred to as hawk's eye, although sometimes also petersite, which we'll learn later. Show you the back. Isn't that just stunning? If I can get a little closer. There we go. Look at that fibrous structure. <gasps> so gorgeous. Oh, absolutely stunning. Um, so Tiger's Eye comes in three different colors. Uh, red Tiger's Eye, which is often nicknamed Dragon's Eye. Blue Tiger's Eye, which is often nicknamed hawk's eye, and the usual yellow, goldish brown tiger's eye that I have here. Absolutely gorgeous. Here's a little red tiger's eye wand that I purchased in the UK. It was labeled Dragon's Eye, and you can see that it still does have the bit of golden uh, tiger eye included in it as well. Little interesting historical fact, uh, Roman soldiers used to wear uh, tiger's eye for protection in battle. 
Um, and tiger, tiger's eye was thought to be uh, all-seeing due to its appearance. <clears throat> so when it comes to red tiger's eye, which is also known as dragon's eye, um, and sometimes even survivor stone, um, it is tiger's eye. It's still the same tiger's eye, the same process happened to form its, its beautiful structure, um, but it has red shades and hues instead of uh, just that golden look. Uh, this mineral can form naturally due to natural oxidization, but that can be pretty rare. So um, this one I've researched online and it seems that when the red and gold of the tiger tiger's eye is kind of swathed like this and uneven within the stone, like it's much more saturated on the back and then just kind of seems to flow through the usual yellow tiger's eye. From what I can tell, um, this is possibly a real red tiger's eye. However, I can't be 100% certain of that. But that's what my gut tells me just based on uh, the structure that we can see. However, I've also bought this red tiger's eye tumbled stone and I would assume this one has been treated to turn red. However, again, not sure, could be natural. Who really knows? <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, most red tiger's eye on the market has been heat treated to give it that reddish appearance. They take regular old gold tiger's eye and, and heat it up and that's what kind of uh, turns the iron into a red, a more red hue. So typically this stuff is uh, man altered, the red version that is. Still gorgeous, I still love my pieces. I don't mind when things are uh, altered by man. I still enjoy them. I still love to collect them. Uh, it doesn't mean it's a bad stone, but it's just good to know these things. It's good to have a sense of, of how that market works and the little tricks that they use. <laughs> there we go. Now, I have a few little pieces of Peter Sight in earrings. These were made by Shelley Stoneworks. Absolutely stunning. Very typical for uh, Peter Sight. And you can see that chantoyancy in there as well. Chantoyancy. Absolutely stunning. So Peter Sight is also known as Tempest Stone, and it was discovered by Sid Peters in 1962, hence the name Peter Sight. Um, and he discovered it while he was prospecting uh, some farmland in Namibia in Africa. And after his discovery, he registered the find in the mineral records of Britain. His discovery was published in 1964, and the material was named Peter Sight. Currently, there are two known sources of petersite in the world, China and Africa. Uh, these two forms of petersite are similar, but still somewhat different from each other. Uh, the Chinese petersite, uh, its fibrous mineral, uh, is made up of a magnesium-rich alkalic amphibole named uh, torendrakite, I believe, torendrakite. Um, and the African Namibian, the original Peter Sight variety is mainly crocodolite. So it is very much similar, very much related to tiger's eye. I'll show you my other one. The other earring appears darker until you see the angles and then you'll see that, the shine. it turns into a lighter blue. So while Peter's site has the lovely chantoyancy of tiger's eye, it is not found in continuously structured bands or fibers. Um, it's more in swirl swaths and fibrous, sometimes linear segments, as you can see in these earrings. 
Uh, so thus the structure of the fibrous streaks in petersite may appear rather chaotic and can flow or exist in many directions side by side like bold paint strokes. And that's because the fibrous uh, structure in petersite has been folded, stressed, even fractured or broken apart um, just via the Earth's geologic processes. Um, and then that fibrous material uh, reforms and is naturally re-cemented together by that quartz. Uh, and that process is referred to as uh, brecciated, braciated, brecciated, like breccia, bracia. And these are really, these earrings are really nice um, blue, simply blue specimens. Um, however, petersite can include colors of not only just blues, but golds and reds as well. Blue is the rarest color, probably why it is far more expensive than regular uh, tiger's eye or even the rare, the rare red one. Um, blue is certainly the rarest and red follows as the next rarest uh, color. But basically, Petersite um, is a breccia rock of hawk's eye, the blue hawk's eye, and then the yellow tiger's eye. Um, it's not a, a totally unique rock. It is something that we are actually quite familiar with. This one is labeled nellite and is sometimes called honeystone as well. Also lion skin. This could be called lion skin as well. Um, it's a new crystal to the market. It's a silicate mineral that contains uh, blue petersite and gold tiger's eye. Um, so again, very much, uh, you know, the same as tiger's eye or petersite. They are um, the same. <laughs> um, yeah, so this stone is mined very, very close to where petersite is mined in Namibia, Africa. So again, it's very much a related stone. Um, you could call this petersite with, uh, you know, uh, more heavily included with uh, tiger's eye, but there's certainly the, the blue in it. There we go. Gorgeous. And this one, um, like I mentioned, it's it's not a uh, typical tiger's eye. You can't see that fibrous structure as easily. Um, it's certainly something a little different based on its structure. And as is, uh, you know, typical of petersite, it is kind of swathed inside here, um, swirled. Uh, it's not really in that rigid kind of vertical fibrous form that we're used to with tiger's eye. And a lot of the blue is up here and it's looking very black on the video. <laughs> Anyways, it's a gorgeous stone. I absolutely love it. And, you know, the name Nellite or Honeystone is more of a, again, like a nickname, an industry nickname rather than a true mineral name. So again, you could call this uh, Petersite or Hawk's Eye, Tiger's Eye with regular Tiger's Eye. You know, just nicely blended together. And there you have it. So I definitely learned something researching this. I hope you guys learned a little something too about these different types of specimens. Um, and you know what? Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I love making these and I love sharing them with you. It means a lot to me. Um, so hopefully I'll see you around for the next one. Bye.